Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, Brent and I just talking. Uh, we're history. talking books. Just talking books and history. That's how we are. It's how we roll. It's how we roll. How was the weekend, my friend? Did some work. Did some work. He's doing a TV show. I can't really talk about it right now. Long but, uh, days, my either man. Either way, you're on set. A little 7 a.m. to midnight these days. Right yeah, now. by the way. Hey, careful what you wish for. They always say if you're going to do a TV show in Hollywood, you better love it. I, and you, know, you do. I love it. But you better love it. And when you do a one hour, when you do a one hour, like let's just say CSI, I've done a couple of one hour shows where at the height of their fame, like West Wing, CSI, where, you know, everybody's watching them in America. And when you're sitting on that set all day and you watch the stars who have to come into a room and I mean, and I'm not joking when I say this, well, you'll get there, please. You'll get there at 5 a.m., maybe six. You'll get some makeup on. Then you wait around. Then what you'll do is we got to get a shot of you coming in and seeing the back of the wall and you notice something because you're a detective. So we have to have, come, you guys come in, you look at the back of the wall and I want you to go, huh? And then the other person's going to go, what? And we're going to cut, but we're going to do that about, well, we're going to do that for three hours and here's why. Different need a lot angles. of different angles. Oof. need a lot of different angles and the lighting's always going to fuck up so it might take a little longer. It's a longer. good problem to have though. But, I, but uh, it, it, it is, but it I'm just can get actor. a little tedious. It can get uh, a little tedious. Yeah, to, it, trust me, I'd rather be doing this than not get in the gig. But also, I'm not an a, this. I'm not an actor and this, right. I'm a host. A host so I, I was thinking because I can't give anything away. I wish I could right now. Obviously, I'm for sure going to spoil the whole. Give us show a nugget. We're not even talk about it. What are we doing here? I'm I'm glad uh, turnips. I'm no, glad Keely and Jay rode with us to the event. Both were like Brian doesn't stop. I'm like welcome to my life, dude. I was talking the whole way. Two hours didn't yep. stop talking once. I talked hard. Talked fast. Rat a tat tat about everything. Rat a tat tat. Random thought. Random like, like a woodpecker on your roof. Like a woodpecker on like your roof. Like a woodpecker that fucking stumbled in my cocaine stash yep. and just fucking just went nuts. Here's the thing though. When you said you. You talk a lot i was like now nah, i gotta up the ante now nah, i gotta i gotta talk even no you do that anyways that's just what you do but I, I was glad they could experience it i get pumped and excited about their live shows what's an older gay man brian callen <laughs> oh, sorry the, sorry sorry that popped it's out. just the kid just for older kid. men the kid did you listen to rogan and dan blitzerian I did listen to Rogan again. Because you know what we found very interesting mm -hmm. and all our followers? You started following Dan now. I sure did. That's interesting after all that shit you talked about. And you the know guy. what? Because I listened to him. I'm glad you brought that up. I listened to that podcast and I came away with a really positive view of Dan Bilzerian. I, I mean, he seems like a kind of a good guy. At least he went through buds twice. I didn't know he was in the military for four years. Uh, he seems to be an, um, an effective and good gambler. I think, uh, and he was very open about his challenge now at 35 when he's ticked off the bucket list of sensations he's experienced. Because it's all sensation. Five girls at once, sex nine times, uh, speed that's boats, guns. Now, yeah. These are sensations. He's, that's these his are, life. These are things that satisfy your immediate urges. Well, that's appetites. the normal for him now. Like it's not, he, like it doesn't do it for him So anymore. what happens is, as we talked about, what happens is you lose the ability to stimulate. Once you have satisfied those appetites, you as a human being need more. So but, th but those aren't accomplishments. Like that, and go. that was your problem with Dan when there you went go. bad on him was like, that's, it's that's, not that inspiring. It's, well, it's, they're not accomplishments. Right. Like posting a picture, you know, with a girl uh, with big tits and, you know, and, and at the beach on Vegas or right. the pool at Vegas, that's. And, and to his credit, the reason I, 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 by the way, I started following him only, I don't know, I don't even know why, but, but to his credit, he knows that. And to his credit, I think he's been upfront about, you know, I think if you spoke to him, I don't know him, he would probably say that my next, my, my next challenge is to figure out how to make my life fulfilling. You and I had a long conversation about what accomplishment really means. And I was talking to these guys, to Evan and Killian and Oh, Michaela, before I came in? Yeah, about, about the idea that you can craft your life into a masterpiece. And what I mean by that, and this is really important to somebody who's almost 50 to, to kind of share, is that... What matters and what's fun, and you have now discovered this, Brennan, is that real fulfillment comes from getting very good at something. And more importantly, maybe even being creative around that thing, sort of sitting down and brainstorming. That's in our world, though. But it can be in anything. It can be in a business. It can be in anything where you are looking at how, what's a better way to do X? Got to kick it off with, uh, with our boy, Jason Ellis. Oh. Yeah, he fought uh, he fought Shane Carwin in a literal tied arm behind his back match. Now, this was a surprise to you, Brennan, right? This is At a Ellis real Mania. surprise to you. No, I I don't. I'm kidding. I mean, Jason. Uh, I mean, Jason's my boy. I'd never go bad on him. 
I, mean, I, I think he kind of knew. Like Jason, when I, I went on a show that same week, he's like, what's the worst going to happen? Yeah, of course they expect me to get knocked out. Like, all right, I get knocked out. I live to see another day. Like I was in there with Shane Carwin. It's, I, I pleased you know the, my fans and stuff like that and showed them that. You know, I have the balls to do it. He, The one thing about Jason, he even said this, he trained his ass off. So he's like, all right, if I get knocked out, at least I did the best version of me in there. You know what mm. I'm saying? So definitely f- took some balls. A lot he, of cuts. He literally thought he was going to go in there and, and like win the first two rounds and thought Shane was going to get frustrated and then he was going to give Shane his right hand. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm telling you, man. He was going to give Shane his right hand? If, if, wow. the, if he won the first two rounds, he's like, all right, let's wow. see what you got. He had no idea, huh? Yeah, I mean, Jay, listen, Jason's been in there at wild card, you know, with some straight pros and, and hangs in there. Goes like five, six rounds with these monsters, man. Like, Jason can that's box. Yeah, that's impressive. But, you know, Shane Carwin's, I, Shane's probably 285 pounds here. Oh, my God. Like, like Shane's a fuck. He's a truck, man. He's my a monster. God. And, and Shane's not the guy you want to do this with. Like, sh- like I, the people say, go, why don't you do it? I would never do that. Because you wouldn't want to hit him. No, a, I don't want to be part of that. B, I, I just don't want to do. I don't. I don't want to. I have no interest in. It wouldn't make doing you that. feel in any way. You'd probably feel bad if you had to open up on him. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't knock Jason Ellis out no matter what. Even right. if he's hit me hard. Right. Shane, you land one punch, he's gonna. He's gonna want to get you back. That's Shane. Shane's an <laughs> animal, man. It's. But you did call it. You said you were kind of like, I don't like That's this like, for Jason. This is not that, good for I mean, Jason. calling it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like anyone, Keely could call it. She never boxed but in But he has life. one hand tied. It doesn't even, matter. Like literally, even anyone's like, it's a bit. But you've always idea. said that with pros. Like when I have, I've had friends who train a lot and they're actors. And I'm like, well, he's, he did really well against him in sparring. And you go, it, you're talking about a pro fighter. It, you're, you're, it doesn't matter what you say. He would get my, knocked my out. My favorite when people round. go, he's so small. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know he is small. You know what he would do to you? <laughs> like, it's so, it's like size. Like, it, you're, it, people just have no idea. Man. They have no idea. They have no, I mean, Until no, you've no, been no. in there with somebody who's really good. Who, uh, when they said he's so small, are they talking about... Right. Anyone, uh, TJ, Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw. Oh, gotcha. Uh, Dimitri, yeah. I mean, name anyone in the UFC. Yeah, you look at him, you're like, man, you're a lot smaller. Oh, it's hilarious when someone who's like six three will say like, or you know, over six foot or something like that will be like, oh yeah, I could kick Demetrius Johnson's ass. No, like, Dude, my man, you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Or it's, or it's like you when you saw Daniel Cormier, you're like, God, I can't believe how short he's. Like, no, I get that. Yeah, and he had the polo on. Yeah, buttoned it up. looked like a like nothing. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, one of the greatest fighters of all time. He could beat up that entire room all at once. <laughs> I fucking love it. Yeah, that, that's why it drives me nuts when people always talk about size all the time. Yeah, because I was looking at the size difference between you and him. I mean, the there's skill. A, there's a, a, yeah. It's skill. And I was like, damn. It's all skill. It's all skill. All skill. It's all skill. Incredible. That's what makes it so great. Unless you get a guy who's twice the size of DC and he has the same skill, yeah, then you're going to have issues. Different story. It looks like one FC is kind of going after him. Oh, don't do um, that, George. Don't. Eric Spicely, the guy who beat uh, Tiago Santos a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, he tweeted that GSP told me the fight he's most interested outside of the UFC is Ben Askren. That's just G- GSP is obsessed with wrestling and grappling. You know, he's a very high level wrestler. I get that. George, and I will text him after this. Do not. Listen, I love one FC. That's all great. Blah, blah, blah. You go to one FC, you disappear. As far as the America, the as North America, yeah. Canada, you're gone. Yeah. Sign with one FC, see what happens to your career. You're gone. Yeah. You got to be. Go, in, go to you got to be. In, go to Bellator. Yeah. They have the money. You're gonna get revenue of the the TV deals. You're gonna um, movies. Whatever you want to do, man. So, you, so even, if, even if uh, UFC stepped up and gave him like a crazy deal, you would say, "Don't go to." UFC. I would sign with the UFC. Don't get, don't get it twisted. Yeah, there's, there's one UFC's the best in the world. Yeah. They're the best in the world of what they do. And the best fighters. And the best fighters. Yeah. If you want to be, if it depends what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Would he get a title shot right away? Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But with uh, if the UFC came to an agreement and they're going to give you the necessary money that Under Armour is paying you, know, the sponsors you'd lose out on, mm-hmm. and you can go back and fight for the title right away, you sign with the UFC. Sure. You don't get don't of... ever get it twisted. Yeah. I know I'm a, I, I can be a little negative on the UFC. There's only one real organization to UFC, but they're not playing ball with GSP. So you go to Bellator. And that's, that's a what you really do. good point. They clearly don't know what they have. No, 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 no. It's just they're not it, fans. it's scary, man. Again, I have no skin in the game. I'm not on this ship anymore. I jumped that ship two years ago when I retired. I've, I have nothing to do with the game. So, But as an outsider looking in and knowing some other details about the deal and people involved, they don't know what they're doing. 
They just don't. You 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 got you got uh, it, it. It's tough, man. I don't I don't know how to say it. The an example would be like uh, if you have an actor. So it'd be like all right, you might. It's like Tom Hardy. You you know what I'm saying? Playing a fighter. Right. He's not a real fighter. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you have him. Now he's the head of it. You know what I'm saying? Like he's an entertainer, man. Mm -hmm. Don't know what he's doing. He's staring mm -hmm. at ship. That's crazy. Right. It's crazy. And then, but then you got egos with Dana, who's like, no, we can't pay him that much money because then everyone else can want that money. It's GSP, man. Yeah. He's generated a lot of income and a lot of interest. I guess they're figuring he's 35. It's GSP, man. Now, now you have Rory. You have G think about Rory versus GSP. Wow. Over in Bellator. You got Rory. You got GSP. You have Chael over there now. Ben Henderson. It's good, man. Yeah. It's good. You got some exciting fighters over there. You got some really athletic, exciting fighters. With some, GSP not, is not a big one. Not stringent drug testing. GSP is a big one. Ladies and gentlemen, he's, uh, well, a member and lead singer of a group called Sugar Ray. He's Irish. He's got all his hair. He's the best, <laughs> he's looking, a, he's the best he's looking guy in here. He's, be he's the best looking That's, guy in here. He's an American, and his name is Mark McGrath. Ladies and gentlemen. The legend. Oh, you Mark guys. McGrath, ladies and gentlemen. Tell him you want to fly. <laughs> You were I was like, like God I was like, you, I'll give you a beat moment. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Guess where I get that the most? Where? At the airport. We were just talking about at the airport, it. At the airport. dude. I just say, I know, I know. At I get the it. I get oh it. God! Put your arms around me. Oh, I got to do God. it. Oh, it's everybody's moment. I got to give them their moment. That you got to give them their moment. That makes me furious. Oh, well, but how you about? Know what? Even, but you know, you, they own you in that moment. You yes. know. And by the way, I, they deserve it. You know, if you, I mean, if you're kind enough to recognize me and like, look, I used to get called douche and that. I'll take this. Listen, <laughs> you know, the stink of the '90s is going away. So <laughs> there's a whole freedom for like the vanilla ices in me of the world. Last year, I have to go with, you know. It, it, it never the responsibility kind of never goes and away going back to music how has the game changed because now you have youtube you have you know everything's streaming now there's no no one's buying albums no one's going to best buy buying albums so for you guys to hit at that point which was you know a miracle in itself yes now i feel like there's there's easier access to to a fan base but it's so much more competitive mm. because if brian and i want to start a band tomorrow we can upload to youtube now yeah we're, 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 we're gonna a lot of followers immediately we're, we're gonna start a band and we just found our fucking lead singer but keep going <laughs> oh yeah you're not, I'm you're, joining, baby. you're not leaving the, you're not you guys leaving are hot right now you're not leaving this room until we fucking we we write a song i'll get my i'll get my stink on your train dude, immediately buddy dude, Believe we're me. gonna write so a song before a guy who was like the regular there he goes oh no that's just a given he jumps on people all the time hey man Fucking tell me! Give me the info! Hey, tell me! I'm if, so terrified! Hey, what if you're there to help the monkey that team jumps? You go, ah! Yeah. Oh my god! Well, yeah, I killed it. Kill. I killed it. You got him by his two <laughs> stupid little yeah. arms. Yeah. Dude, I couldn't even do that. I was just like, ah! Ah! It, it yanked on my ear. It, it scratched my forehead. It, it wasn't being nice. That's hey, so terrible. Dude, it's so funny. Hey, I bet you were trying to impress some girl there because I know Brian. You know I was. And you were like, what's you up? Know I was. Like, <laughs> dude, I did a wheel kick for her. I was she was before this, that. Fuck yes. Oh, but of course, of course you did. Of course I did that. Then this little innocent monkey. Told her I was a Black out. Oh yeah. Oh, I was telling her. Oh, I'm, she was older, and I was like, "Well, I live in D.C. right now. My my sister, my sister, the ultimate cockblock. I'm trying to pick this woman up. She's older. A scientist couldn't give two shits about me. First, I have to volunteer that I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. No, she didn't know. I'm like, I'm a black belt. And then I go, Yeah, I live in D.C. You know. And my sister goes, Um. He goes to college there, <laughs> and my dad pays all his bills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, killed oh, Hayer. Dude, Hayer <laughs> kills me. <laughs> kills me. Sister he, has, yeah. he doesn't even have a job. When he wants money, he calls my dad's secretary. <laughs> oh, my God. And by God. the way, he's also paying for this trip. The I mean, took my wheels off. <laughs> and then that monkey went, I try and seal the deal. Attack! I dealt with Donald Trump a whole bunch. Thoughts? I, I, he, total gentleman to me. Never saw him act untoward to anybody, you know. Um, you know he, 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 was, he loves himself. There's no doubt about that. He's the Trump you see on TV. Um, but I, I didn't, you know, to me, he was a gentleman. Like, and when I got uh, <clears throat> fired in a battle of wits against Gary Busey in the yeah. boardroom, oh, God. Um, it was a TV show, less yeah. a competition. Uh, yes. 
he brought me to his office the next day. Didn't have to. It took a half hour to talk to me and said, hey, I appreciate everything you did. You know, you ever need a recommendation? I'm here for you. You know, my hotels are well. You're welcome to stay. I know you travel a lot. So I don't have a bad word to say about him. So you know he's I mean? a, to, so to do I you, think he's qualified to be president? I mean, that's, that's a, whole a different, different story. story. Yeah. And do I think Hillary is? That's a whole different yeah, story. But yeah. So, but so but behind the scenes, and you, uh, you've obviously had a discussion. Yeah. You know him way better than both of us or anyone in here for that matter. Uh, he's like a guy's guy. He's a guy's guy. You know, one thing he did say, Lisa Renna was sitting there and, you know, she just had her lips deflated. Yeah. you know and he goes at least i'm glad you got that you took the lip the uh, stuff out of your lips you know you, you look much more beautiful you're very beautiful very yeah. beautiful i'm sure harry's happier now too huh? you're like <laughs> that's the only thing and like, yeah, i was yeah. like yeah, just you know he's an like, old school guy he's an old school I mean, look he's just everything's been handed to him he's, he's yeah. titled man he's billions of bucks and you know a guy like that can get away with a lot more sorry it's just the way society is yeah. you know yeah, and yeah. He, he's dealt like that he's a little bit he's got one foot in that old school madman sort of executive style you know yeah Oh, that was the only thing I saw. I was a little like, oh Jesus. You yeah, your your contact with him is fairly limited, or is it pretty? Yeah, it's it's fairly limited. I mean, he, he you you see him like you see Don Jr. a lot, and Ivanka a lot. Who, Ivanka is one of the most lovely, graceful human really? beings you will ever meet in your life. Mm -hmm. She lights up a room. It's uh, she's she's easy. She's effervescent. She she's articulate. She's graceful. I mean, there was there's she was right. These kids were raised right. I'll, yes, I'll give them they that. They were. Question for all three of you: What's the worst gig you've ever played? <sighs> wow. Oh, that's Mark, good. we'll start with you. That's good. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we played a gig in Spokane, Washington in 1997, a month before Fly broke. And we were th with three signed bands. One was called The Urge from St. Louis. One was called Snot uh, from Santa Barbara, the Arn Geffen. <laughs> and one was Sugar Ray. And nobody showed up to three signed uh, major <laughs> label bands. Not one person showed up. There was a guy at the bar with like one of those air things in his mouth or in his nose. And then he, as soon as he left, we could play and we played to nobody oh, no. so we can't even say there was one person there, there was nobody there Holy nobody oh, there my. and then the next show we quit we go we're not we're, we're going home the tours is not working and then a month later fly was everywhere around the uh the universe and elsewhere so that was the worst gig but it's also yeah. the best gig because all the bands kind of had fun and kind of played each other so. wow yeah, man, yeah. nobody nuts. not one yeah. nobody no pay <laughs> that yeah. would, that's so embarrassing i nobody. have performed i have <laughs> nobody <laughs> not one yep. yeah. not one they said promoters i, I, I have as a comic <laughs> i have performed with gusto with gusto for four people and one person there was one person i did a half hour for him and he was from israel and he was laughing like this <laughs> by himself comedy store tuesday night 12 12 a.m and, I, and I'm, I'm killing him i did it get it i mean i'm giving him a show like i like i'd be performing for 3500 people just and he's going <laughs> he was giving me the mark mcgrath laugh which you got a great laugh yeah, and i was getting that the whole time one of the best sets. That was, so that was one of my best gigs. Oh my god! One of my best gigs. 